Okay, everybody, we're going to start with section three of radiographic interpretation. We left off at the common anomalies here. Um, retained deciduous primary tooth, um, second molar, that was supposed to have the roof surrounding the second um, premolar that should have been forming down here, but obviously there's nothing there to form. So this is a concern for the patient, especially as they get older, that they're going to um, wonder if they're going to keep that tooth for a long time. If not, you know, this needs to be educated to the patient that there may need to be um, a um, implant possible placement for this tooth in the future. That's just planting the seed, it's not diagnosing anything. We just know that if they were to lose this tooth, we would need to replace it with something. All right, three rooted molar, first molar. And if you'll notice, mirror images, remember, see how distorted this looks so this looks like maybe a malformed maybe a possible third root on this tooth as well so those are very unusual um, periapical radiolucency at the bottom plus the opacity at the bottom as well excuse me bottom that's poor words should be the apex vertical bone loss and mandibular tori you'll just look back at the image and see this generalized opacity that's going on here the patient more than likely has um, some mandibular tori common anomalies here we have some hypercementosis more than likely without clicking and we've got some significant curling of the roots that's sitting right on top of the mandibular nerve um, we have some oh this is interesting there is nothing where's the root what's happening this appears to be very abnormal so I don't know what's happening but follow the shape of the tooth the canal it looks like it's trying to continue but there's nothing left so again hypersementosis and we have what's called idiopathic root resorption for some reason this tooth has decided to develop osteoclasts that are actually activating the bone and um, stimulating dissolving of the root structure of this tooth. Um, we're dealing here where we have a significant posterior imaging. This patient probably was not comfortable in this image, but they needed to get some type of recording where there was a root tip that was more than likely embedded into the maxillary sinus here, which is um, probably not a good situation. Chronic infection, we just never know. This is actually a hamulus and the condyle of the mandible. Um, articulating into the maxillary skull here we have a significant lucency here um, so let's see what happens root fragment probably broke off upon extraction and embedded into the sinus cavities lucency we knew that was not normal don't know what it is like I said but it's not normal so strategic approaches to interpretation remember what happens on one side probably it's going to be the same thing on the other side because there is a law of symmetry. So strategic approaches, approaches you always look from right to the left side of the patient, right to the left, right to the left of the patient. Obviously we know this is the left of our screen, but that is labial mounting, which is the right of the patient as if you were sitting on their lip, hence the word labial, looking into their mouth. That is the difference. So we have a first molar, an absent second premolar, and an apical uh, radiolucency here, right to left. So application of that strategy, you compare right to left areas, calcified pulp chambers bifurcated roots. Compare right and left sides, exactly the same tooth, alveolar bone. We have a second molar here. Well, we can't see the second molar here. First molar, first molar. And you'll see there's no um, 
duplication of this lucency. So something is not right in this area. This looks suspicious to me as far as the uh, uh, discrepancy in the uh, tooth structure here and some darkening or shadowing. So I would want to go in and look clinically. Now what we're looking at also are two different types of images as far as quality. Parallel, non-parallel. Parallel superimposed cusp tips over top of one another compared to the image is shifted or actually the film based in this image it was film or the sensor was tilted too much and therefore the buckle is superimposed over the lingual and tipped and wrote kind of tipped towards the lingual aspect which makes these teeth look much more squatty bodies. If you look at the teeth, this is a first premolar, first premolar. This tooth is shorter than this tooth. If you looked at and drew a straight line across, you probably have distorted this tooth or the image uh, is distorted two to three millimeters worth of foreshortening. And that's what makes them look like squatty bodies. Keeping uh, moving along, these are not very good quality scanned images. They're a little more challenging to see, but you'll see some sclerotic bone in this area here, as well as moving along to these. Again, not very uh, quality images for us to be able to see at this moment. Our images are much more uh, clear, and these are just purely for alerting something's not right. Even in this blurriness that I see here, I have calculus, I have some hors I have some bone loss that's occurring, kind of generalized with this patient. I've got some recurrent decay, um, possibly there. There's some lucency here that's probably vertical bone loss. Even though you can um, see something's just not right in these images. Some recurrent caries here, overhanging margins, some uh, recurrent possibly here, calculus, periodontal bone loss. Again, these are not very diagnostic because we can't see the alveolar crestal bone. Therefore, we're missing a, a critical uh, piece of the pie there that we can't see. These are just anterior region uh, imagery. This is a um, Central image, lateral, canine image. Central, lateral, canine. Patient's right side, patient's left side. This tooth has significant issues. It has a perforated um, previous root canal, more than likely it looks like. There's some lucency here, excuse me, opacity here that says that they may have perforated out the end of the apex and um, this created a huge issue with this tooth. Thus, it's been broken many times. It looks like it's been tried to be pinned and repaired multiple times. We have some decay present. Um, recurrent caries, you know, those types of issues. We know that this is not normal. This would be a very suspicious um, area. Looking through our eyes, it's not normal. Could be filled with a restoration, which makes it very suspicious. So we have to go back and look clinically to determine what is actually going on. Wow, so let's look here just to see. We have a radiolucency on this uh, section of the film, uh, as well as what is called a dens in dente. That's a tooth inside a tooth. Thought you'd never see one. Well, here you go. Small nutrient canal, very narrow mar marrow space. Genial tubercles are like the little localized donut hole. And it's the tubercle with the foramen in the middle. And we have some very irregular periapical lesions in these areas. Very uh, defined lucencies surrounding um, the teeth. We're missing the central here. This looks like a canine lateral central no central lateral possibly canine so um, who knows it could be that this is migrated or drifted apart because there's so much bone destruction if we only had this image I would have to go and look clinically to see to make sure that all the teeth were present if you look in this image it looks like we have a lateral um, 
excuse me, a central, a lateral, and a canine. So this very well could be the central. So when you're looking at this, you have to make sure you have kind of a complete uh, set because you're, you're taking snippets of pictures trying to make a semicircular image of the patient's uh, uh, duplicating their actual um, dental history here. Periapical lesions, these are very foreshortened, so they're distorting the imagery just a little bit. Very uh, irregular shaped crown. And we're seeing that this has a calcified pulp chamber and a thickened PDL, more than likely from trauma from occlusion. And this is what you call a mixed radiolucent radiopacity lesion. You see the opacity within the lucency. That is what is called a mixed. And we have a fractured incisal edges. More than likely, this is occluding these anterior teeth because these are drifting occluding here causing some trauma and there's um, fracturing of the incisal edges. We just never know until you actually start quizzing and doing a clinical evaluation of the patient. Here you have some more bone loss, radio, kind of a generalized radiolucency, thinning of the bone in this region. You've got some loss of the um, uh, alveolar crestal bone, lots of calculus, um, serious issues that the patient may be winding up um, in compromised situation with the anterior teeth. Significant genital tubercle with um, the uh, lingual foramen. We have a fractured tooth here that had a significant loss of structure, probably from either fracturing or um, had a history of having had decay in it. So they put a pin in it trying to hold the tooth together to allow it to hold a um, restoration. We've got some kind of irregular opacity surrounding over here. Again, look at what's abnormal. What are these opacities within the sinus cavity? We don't know. We just know they're not normal. So put, always watch to look um, for abnormal. We have some scalloping and um, we have the maxillary sinus. Great uh, depiction of the Y formation here where you have the floor of the the nasal cavity and the maxillary sinus uh, in conjunction with the hard palate so that you have that separation. Here is the same tooth to this image. It's duplicated. Make sure you look at the tooth in the same um, the same tooth in different images to see if that issue is duplicated. Here you go. See how it's enlarged and we've notated the significant lesions that we saw that were abnormal. Strategic approaches to interpretation for panorals. You're looking for the same types of strategies. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these because I'm almost at my next 15 minute mark, but you can see ankylosed. We have some irregular um, uh, eruption or, uh, excuse me, calcification or uh, development is the word I'm looking for for the third molars. Fairly young person, roots are not fully formed. That's what you always need to watch. That will tell you also if the um, pa how old the patient is. This is a significant um, image. Here we have some very irregular things going on. Um, wire. What's wire doing in here? There's obviously a history of some uh, trauma to this patient. We've got some, you know, the uh, orbit of the eye looks like it was fractured. The palatal region, um, which is this radio opacity, um, is um, very irregular shaped here. Could have been fractured as well. We've got some irregular opacity in this condyle. Does not look like this condyle. Something's not right. What's going on with these sinuses? They're pretty significant. So those are all things that I would want to um, bring to my doctor's attention and say, can you help me with identifying these structures? That way I can continue to learn. We're going to move on and I'm going to close with this imagery. Um, click on through. It will help you identify some very unusual circumstances and I hope to see you guys soon and I hope this helps you to um, get some more experience. We'll just keep working with this and we will see you soon. Bye-bye. Have a good holiday. Bye-bye.